and we are continuing our celebration of Tom Skilling tonight. In nearly a half a century of television meteorology, Tom has seen technology evolve from grease pencils to computer <laughs> graphics and from snow sticks to satellites. And through it all, there has been one constant, the human element. WGN's Mike Lowe reports. We often give the weather human qualities. We can't fight Mother Nature. We describe it with human emotion. The weather is too angry, Diaz says. And call storms by human names. People still stranded after Hurricane Ian. But in reality, the human face of the weather, extensive flooding through central and southern Illinois and Indiana, is the television meteorologist, a profession that has evolved from a gimmicky role of comic relief. The higher ups have removed the border between Indiana and Ohio, making it one giant state. Personally, I'm against it. <laughs> to a data driven position of trust, a voice of authority on topics from travel conditions to public safety. And for 45 years, Almost nobody has been more identified with it. Winds are whistling through the anemometers out at O'Hare Field. Than WGN's Tom Skilling. Well, here's our forecast, our areas under winter weather advisories. And this storm is still a great big severe weather producing machine with an enhanced risk of severe weather expected east of us and a web of pressure lines indicating a weather system that is really wrapped up. Going from bare ground to a cover of snow, and it's falling heavily and very wet there. Wet snow flakes tend to stick together, and so you can get those big half dollar size snowflakes and add a 40 to 50 mile an hour wind with it, and uh, you've got a very wintry scene. From his home office, he discussed the evolution of television meteorology, starting with its primitive beginnings. You know, when I started, we didn't have satellite pictures, we didn't have Doppler radar, we didn't have computer models. The very first TV weather forecasters in the late 1940s and early 1950s were not necessarily even scientists. You had people who were ripping reading the weather, uh, they didn't really have any weather background. On WGN's first newscasts, the weather report was delivered by actor Ned Locke, who also played Ringmaster Ned on Bozo Circus. Bozo Circus is on the air. You know, weather shows in the early days before we were able to visualize the weather with satellite imagery and radar and really show what was going on were full of gimmicks. Skilling himself did the weather with a puppet named Albert the Alley Cat at Milwaukee Station WITI in the mid 1970s. We're the one to partly cloudy sky. Yes, we are, Al. Here's our forecast for tonight. We're expecting unseasonably cool conditions. I think what led to the transition was they liked the fact that whoever was doing the weather had enough scientific acumen to have a background on how these storms develop when they come into the area. Skilling honed that acumen at the University of Wisconsin in the 1970s. Madison was the birthplace of satellite meteorology. Skilling and his classmate Louis Uccellini. Oh, this looks familiar. This is very familiar now. Yeah, so this is where my first class was right there. Isn't that yeah. something? who would become the director of the National Weather Service, recently returned to campus and reminisced about the early days of forecasting. We worked the maps, collected the maps, and then hung the maps up on a wall like this. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> we came in here and we actually worked the plotting of the data. We did. This is the way you started seeing the atmosphere in motion, was doing everything by hand. It was just absolutely incredible. TV producers searched for better ways to gather information and explain it by showing the weather in action. Skilling started out with a few basic graphics such as a weather wall that would be hand-drawn or painted and a paper map that would be plotted. You hand-plotted everything and I look back at that era and I think, how in the world did those who came before me do what they did and how did we do it in the early years? Skilling combined the skills of a scientist with the vision of an artist, creating hand-drawn maps that would become the graphics we see on TV and in the newspaper. Hundreds of his original sketches still exist in the WGN weather department. All right, so here is the famous drawer of Skilling drawings, write-ups, you name it. I couldn't tell you what year some of these were made. These became very famous because this would be something he would draw hand to the art folks, and then when somebody got the Tribune the next day, this is what they would have, was the Tom Skilling drawing. 
that he had come up with. Before we had these very fancy computers that would make these graphics for us, this is where it would start. I mean, you'd sit down with colored pencils, and you, know, you think about Tom and all the different equipment that he has at his fingertips, and yet he'll sit down and make something like this that you may expect from somebody in you know, junior high, right? Or, or even younger to have these colored pencils and have just a great time. The data he was drawing initially came from a battery-powered package of instruments called a radio sonde. Attached to a weather balloon, it would measure and transmit temperature, humidity, air pressure, and wind speeds. We would go on the air uh, in the early stages of my career, and they launched the weather balloons at 7 in the morning and 7 at night Chicago time, and we'd start getting the first pieces of information, but we wouldn't be able to totally process it. Ongoing research here in Norman, Oklahoma since the 1970s is making possible the next generation weather radar known as NEXRAD, a Doppler radar, a radar that will scan the skies across the United States, offering us the ability to put out warnings in a much more timely fashion. Soon Doppler radar was widely used by meteorologists to examine the velocity and motion of precipitation. We have radar systems we never had uh, that can see snow, uh, we couldn't see snow at one time. Ready to, ready music. In the 1980s, the technology was changing at a rapid pace. Chicago's stuck in a temperature inversion. Meteorologists started presenting the weather in front of a big green screen called a chroma key, which allows a filter to replace anything green with images and graphics like weather maps. I, I've been with WGN about 20 years now, and there's not a function we perform in putting a weather show on the air here that hasn't totally changed. And some of that technology is interfering right now. <laughs> but by the early 1990s, Skilling focused more on using equations and computer displays, one of the first meteorologists in the country to do so, showing the atmosphere in motion. It dawned on meteorologists back early in the last century that we could probably write equations that describe the way the atmosphere would unfold. In the 1990s, Skilling and Emmy Award-winning weather producer Bill Snyder would still analyze hundreds of pages of data from the National Weather Service that would come in via die fax machine. For years, you got stacks of alphanumeric data, print data. In meteorology is, is a, a profession where you work with a lot of data. It's real time. It's got to be. Now, Skilling is the undisputed master of the numerical forecast, one that produces a spectrum of probable outcomes. Each line here is a different computer model solution on what the temperatures may be in Chicago. Allowing him to zero in on the most likely scenarios for long-range and short-range forecasts. Little could they have imagined back in that era, early last century, that we'd have machines that would do quadrillion operations per second, which is the kind of thing that we run today. Today, weather services produce models using computers with data from radar technology, satellite databases. Here's what it looks like on the satellite tonight. And measured natural elements. We even get German and Korean models now. From around the world. And it's wise to look at every solution you can get to get an idea of the whole range of possible ways the weather's going to unfold. Um, and th thereby, you generate a more accurate product. He synthesizes all of the information in a process called ensembling. And that's what this is all about. It's an extraordinary time in meteorology. Today, thermometers are scattered across the region, giving instant and accurate temperature measurements at pinpoint locations. WGN also has a network of cameras that show the real-time conditions across the area. That, combined with radar, helps the trained experts see what the computer can't. What part of the thunderstorm produces the tornado? You look at your radar, you see it coming into an area, and you say, hey, folks in this area are at risk of being, you know, affected adversely by the storm that's developing. Stay with us on the seven day, because that does have an impact. But one thing has remained the same from the start of Skilling's career to the end. The expertise of the meteorologist, giving the weather a human touch. That's how an air conditioner works. Mike Lowe, WGN News. And we have more on how Tom revolutionized meteorology on our website, including a short documentary from 1997 called The Making of the New Tribune Weather Page, created by former WGN producer Pam Grimes. And you can see that at WGNTV.com slash skilling.